Happy Status family, welcome to Kalea Home, our online worship experience. We're so grateful that you could get connected to this service for where, from wherever you're at. And we hope and pray that it's a blessing to you and to your family. Family, we have been gathering in person for over a month now, and we've been so blessed to be able to gather together. Now, starting June 19, we will be continuing to gather in person, but now it will be indoors at the Auditorium McLendo Academy. And we invite you to join us and be a part of this in-person worship experience. Now, we do need some volunteers to make sure that our in-person, indoor services run smoothly. And if you'd like to join us, go ahead and send us a message to the, to the email that appears on the screen. We would love for you to get connected in our services. Let us know you're worshiping with us right now online as you take Take part of this worship experience and we have a question for you that we would love for you to answer in the chat section and the question is what childhood activity would you love to be able to do right now go ahead and let us know in the chat Thank you so much for sharing about all those childhood activities that you wish you could do now and, and we hope that you have and find some time to be able to do those. Once again, family, we want to thank you so much for continuing to contribute with your giving to this local church and to the worldwide church. Thank you for being so generous. If you would like to continue to give, you can uh, continue giving following the link on the screen. Uh, we hope and we pray that as you continue giving, you see God's blessings in your life. Now family, I want to invite you to prepare your heart and your mind as we begin our worship service. And it's our prayer that it may be a great blessing and uplifting to you today. Welcome family. 
What a blessing it is to be together here praising and, and singing. And before we begin, why don't we go ahead and turn to 1 Peter 10, 9 and then see what, what the word has for us today as we begin. I'm going to read it and it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Join us, family, as we sing about the faithfulness and the goodness that God has for us. Join us. We start. I was buried beneath my shame.
this time, church family, there will be some names that will be put on the screen. And we would like for you to choose two or three names from this list and just take about a minute or so to pray with whoever you are next to and just lift these people up in prayer. And if you would like, you can also take these names with you throughout the week and keep them in your heart and in your prayers. Bendito Señor, estamos delante de ti en esta tarde sin ningún merecimiento, pero confiando en que tú escuchas las peticiones de nuestro corazón, que por medio de la sangre de Cristo podemos dejar todas nuestras cargas en ti, Señor. Permite que podamos sentir esa paz que nuestro corazón necesita y que cada petición elevada pueda ser contestada a tu tiempo, Señor. Y ayúdanos a confiar en que tú quieres lo mejor para nosotros. Ayúdanos a estar contentos con tu voluntad, Señor. Y que podamos seguir alabándote aún en medio de la prueba. Gracias porque nos das la seguridad del Espíritu Santo. Y Señor, te pedimos que tú sigas acompañándonos en el resto de este servicio. Y que podamos, Señor, sentir renovadas nuestras fuerzas espirituales para seguir adelante, Señor para mostrar tu amor, para predicar que vienes pronto. Esto lo pedimos en el nombre de Jesús. Amén.
Hey family, happy Sabbath once again. We're about to start with our message soon, but I wanted to give an announcement. It's an announcement that we gave in person, uh, uh, in, in our in our in-person gatherings already, but we wanna let you in as our online audience. Over the last few years, we've had the blessing of having Pastor Eman um, and Denise as part of our team, part of our family. They're pillars in our church. They were with us from the very beginning. And as part of this transitional season that we find ourselves in, where we're in a very much, very real way, kind of rebuilding things. Part of the transition is gonna be that they're gonna be transitioning out into another phase of ministry. Pastor Eman got picked up by the Southern California Conference and he's gonna be now the associate pastor at Central Spanish Church. But we are gonna lose him here at our congregation. So we wanna invite you to be with us on June 12th for their farewell celebration. We're gonna have them uh, preach uh, his final sermon in our congregation and we're gonna stick around after church to celebrate the the many, you know, the, the what six, almost seven years that they've been a part of our community. Join us, make plans to be there with us. I know they, it will mean the world to them and it's gonna it mean the world to us, right? To spend that moment with them. We, we'll see you there June 12 for this wonderful celebration that we're gonna have for our good pastor. Hey family, let's see God in prayer together. Lord, we thank you for your word once again and we pray Holy Spirit that you may speak loud and clear. That you may show us who you want us to be through this beautiful prayer, the living prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, I'm excited about today. This is uh, the second to last installment of the series that we have been on, talking about the living prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Today we go back to the text, and just for context, the book of, uh, Gospel of Luke talks about the disciples talking to Jesus and asking Him, how do we pray? What makes us different from everyone else? Jesus responds in the Gospel of Luke, but I'm going I'm to go on and read the version of the prayer from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and on. We've read it many times already, but we're going to read it one more time. Our Father in heaven, he, well, he says, pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And then some manuscripts include, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today we zero in on that second to last portion of the text where it says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What does that even mean? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Like, what, what does that mean? And, and I, I want to I just kind of break down that phrase a little bit and, and, and kind of show you how problematic it may seem if you just kind of read it in passing. Lead us not into temptation. To lead is to guide someone along, right? Lead us not into temptation. What, what, what Jesus is telling us, instructing us to, to pray is essentially, God, don't lead us, don't guide us into testing the word temptation and testing are the same word in the Greek. Do not lead us into tests. Do not guide us into tests. Now that's, that's kind of, that's kind of a, an odd thought if you think about it, right? Because we're essentially saying that God may, there, there may be moments in our lives when God leads us into being tempted. Now the book of James tells us that God will never tempt anyone, but but then we see that in the Gospel of Matthew, for example, in the Gospel of Luke, that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. So even though the Spirit did not do the tempting itself, it certainly led Jesus into the wilderness, and that's where Jesus was tempted. So Jesus is telling us to pray, Father, do not lead us into temptation. Do not lead us into temptation. Now, I almost, it, it almost makes sense to me as a parent, right? Why, why God would sometimes lead us into temptation, allow us to be tempted, because sometimes we just got to learn some lessons. We see that in parenting. Sometimes I just let my kids go through some trials on their own so they can learn some lessons. So perhaps we can justify it that way, but is that really what this is saying? I mean, God, God, we know that God may lead people into temptation because He did it to Jesus Himself. So if God does that, why would Jesus ask us to pray against that? Like, why would He instruct us for us to pray against that? There's something so strange about it. So I, w I wonder if, if it actually means something different. I wonder if it means something different. And I love the fact that the Spanish actually translate this so differently. 
In Spanish, it says, no nos dejes caer en tentación. It literally says, keep us, keep us from falling into temptation. Keep, them from ca- keep us from caving into temptation. Uh, I love how Eugene Peterson says, he, he says it, keep us safe from ourselves and from the devil. So it's a prayer of protection. It's a prayer asking to be kept safe. It's a prayer asking to be kept from falling and caving into sin. And, and I love the fact that it's also a confession. We're confessing that if it's not because of the grace of God and the power of God, we can't stand against evil. We can't stand against temptation. We can't stand against the attacks of the enemy. We can't stand. We can't do it alone. And family, let me just, let me just tell you already, you are not strong enough to do this thing alone. You're not powerful enough to, 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 to endure and to overcome on your own. You can't resist temptation on your own. You need special help. And Jesus here is instructing us to pray for that help. Lead us not into temptation could be translated, keep us from falling into temptation. No nos dejes caer en tentación. Now for Jesus, it seems like for him, it matters that we make the right decisions. Like the right decisions matter to the Lord. He, he wants us to right, make the right decisions. And decisions are a reflection of our, of, of our character. But at the same time, they're the architects of our character. So the, 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 the way we make decisions, the decisions that we make start shaping who we are, giving shape to our, to our person as a whole. And Jesus wants us to make the right decisions. We've said this in church before, I'm going to repeat this one more time. We are born looking like our parents, but will die looking like our decisions. And for Jesus, it matters that we die looking well, looking like the person that we were designed to be, looking like the one whose image we bear. He wants us to make the right decisions. So in this prayer, he is including, lead us not into temptation, meaning do not help us not to fall, not to cave into temptation. Now, what kind of temptation are we talking about here? Because easily, you know, we can go, go on and grab this one clause and personalize this, right? We can customize this based on any of our weaknesses. But I want to suggest to you that this entire, this entire prayer is interconnected. Like we're talking about one single organism here with so many interconnected parts. And I believe that Jesus already gave, the, gave us the answer as to what temptations he's referring to. Remember that this entire thing begins with our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. And we've talked about this already. Hallowed be thy name is not just God. Make your name holier on your own. I mean, God, God's already holy. How can he make himself more holy? What this means is, God, make make your name holy in me. Sanctify your name in me. Glorify your name in me. Could it be that this is referring to the temptation of us taking the name of the Lord in vain? And even though we carry the name of God, we don't live according to what we carry. Part of the prayer also says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Could it be that the temptation here is that rather than espousing the values of the kingdom, we would be living up to other values? that go in complete opposite to what the kingdom stands for. Thy will be done. Could it be that the temptation here is to place our will above God's will? I mean, could it be that the prayer itself includes the various ways in which we may be tempted by not having kingdom values, by placing our will above God's will, by not glorifying His name, by not providing the daily bread to people who need it most? and by being unforgiving. Last week we talked about forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Could it be that the temptation here that we are we're, that we're being asked to, to pray about, to, to pray strength over us, that we may actually have the strength to forgive as we have been forgiven, right? And resist the temptation to be an unforgiving community. Like, there's so much depth to this prayer and it's all interconnected. It all belongs together. It's a living organism with interconnected parts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, says the text. Deliver us from evil. What does it mean, deliver us from evil? It could also be translated, deliver, deliver us from the evil one. 
And yes, we're talking about the devil here. And I know, I know, I know the devil's so like it's such an old theme, right? It's not something very popular. We don't like talking about it. Why? Because you know we've we've made caricatures of the devil, right? We have the pitchfork guy with the tail and and the red skin and the horns and everything. It's so easy for us to just kind of mock and dismiss the devil. But let me tell you something: the devil's real. The devil's real. Now let, 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 let me let me just say this and. And, and I want to be very clear because a lot of times we blame the devil for everything. We, you know, we have a bad day. Oh, it's the devil. Hey, we got a flat tire. Uh, a tire. It's the devil, right? Oh, you know, we, we did bad, bad on the test. It's the devil. No, my friend, you just didn't study. Okay, stop blaming the devil for all the mistakes that you're making. I mean, if, you're, if, you, if, you, have high, if you have high cholesterol, don't blame the devil for it. It's the cheeseburgers you keep eating and the pizza you keep eating. That may be the reason why that's happening. Or it may just be genetics. But, I mean, we, we blame the devil for everything. The other extreme would be to dismiss them altogether. And that would be a mistake because the devil is real. And here Jesus is actually pointing out the fact that the evil one needs to, need, we, we need to be delivered from it. We know that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against authorities and cosmic powers, the spiritual forces of evil. We're talking about a real spiritual war here that we find ourselves in the thick of. And Jesus wants us to pray that we may be delivered from it because it seems as though it may have some sort of a stronghold over us and over our world. Deliver us from the evil one. Now, oftentimes when we pray, deliver us from evil, we think about all the things that are evil. We think about disease. We think about pain. We think about hatred, about racism, about bigotry. We think about injustice, right? We think about all these things that are evil, but it's very different to pray about things that are evil and consider things that are evil and pray and consider evil itself. There are things that are evil and then there's evil. There are things that are evil and then there's evil. Let me, let me uh, break it down this way, illustrate it this way. I want you to imagine a bird in a cage, a bird in a cage, a bird in a cage, a bird in a cage. Now this bird has a problem. His owners never brought him water and never brought him any food. So he finds himself in a cage. He has no water and he has no food. So he, he is now thirsty and he's hungry. Those are his issues. Now, that is the evil that he is experiencing. Because he was not brought any water and was not brought any food, he is now experiencing hunger and thirst. Those are his evil, the evils that he's having to deal with. But here's the thing. I already told you where the, cage, uh, where, where the bird is. He finds himself in a cage. And you need to remember that the bird was not designed to live in a cage. As a matter of fact, the bird was designed to be out, free, flying, so that he could find his own food and his own drink. You see, evil is the cage. Evils, that would be the hunger and the thirst. And the evils exist because evil exists. If the bird would be set free and he had the freedom to live the life that he was designed to live and fly and soar in freedom and find his own food and find his own water, that there would be no hunger. There would be no thirst. You see, oftentimes, whenever we pray over the evil, we pray over the hunger and the thirst and we are not praying about the cage. We have grown accustomed to the cage. We have normalized the cage. We've kind of come to the, to, 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 you know, to, you know, embrace it in a way, right? We come to terms with the fact that, hey, the cave is going to be here for a long time. But what Jesus is telling us here, even though we've grown comfortable with the cage, he's actually telling us that we were made for so much more. He's reminding us that we were meant to fly. We were made to soar. We were made to be in freedom. And we are, we, we are not to just be praying over the food and the drink, over the hunger and the thirst. We got to be praying as believers, no more cage. No more cage. We don't want to live in a cage anymore, Lord. Please, 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 Lord, free us from the cage. Deliver us from the cage. Deliver us from evil. And it's so interesting that, that this is a confession too. 
Because it, it reminds us that we need to be liberated. The cage holds us back. Evil holds us back. We are not meant to live this way. We're meant to soar. We're meant to be free. And the truth is that the reason why we have to pray is because we, we, we can't liberate ourselves on our own. We can't accomplish that ourselves. We need someone to step in and break the cage open so that we can fly free. And let me tell you something, that's exactly what Jesus did on the cross and on the resurrection morning. He broke the cage so that we could fly free. But we also understand that as long as we live on this earth, there's still a sense in which the cage remains. It's still a reality. The cage is still real. Evil is still real. It's something that still holds us back, that still limits us, that still boxes us in. And Jesus wants us to pray, please, God, remove the cage, deliver us from evil. Now, we've already said, and I'm going to land with this. We've already mentioned that this prayer has multiple dimensions. This entire prayer, we're, we're pointing to the future. We're praying about someplace some moment in the future, right? The kingdom, the future, right? The moment when, the, day, the time when we will all have our daily bread, when all of our needs will be met, the future, the future, the future. But there's also implications to the present. There's real implications for the present in this prayer. Now I wonder if by Jesus giving us this clause of this prayer and telling us to pray to be delivered from evil, I wonder if what Jesus is intending for us to do is for us to imagine a life without a cage. And not just that, to display to the world, to show to the world with our life, a life without a cage. That as we live our life glorifying God, right? Hallowed be thy name, hallowing his name, glorifying his name through our life, that the world may catch a glimpse of a life without a cage. When we say thy kingdom come and we actually embody kingdom values that the world may see a life without a cage. When we say thy will be done in me and us that the world may truly see through our lives and through God's will being played out through our lives a life without a cage. When we give bread, the daily bread, when God uses us to provide daily bread that the world may see what what life would be without a cage. And, and when we become the kind, of, the kind of forgiving community, the kind of community that receives forgiveness and gives forgiveness, receives forgiveness and gives community, uh, 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 forgiveness that, that the world may see in us as God's community a life without a cage. So that's why we hallow His name. That's why we say, Thy kingdom come. That's why we say that it will be done in us as it is in heaven. That's why we, we pray for daily bread and that's why we forgive as we have been forgiven and we pray God to forgive us as we forgive. That's why we do it so the world may catch a glimpse of life without a cage. Family, we have something that the world does not. As the body of Christ, we, have, we can boast of something that the world does not have. And it's a different imagination. We can actually imagine reality without the cage. We can actually imagine life and the world outside of what we know, outside of this cage. We believe there's something more. We believe that the brokenness and the pain and the anger and all the ugliness that we experience here is not all there is to life. There's so much more. And through our lives, as we pray this prayer, we can show the world a life without a cage. The kind of life that we were created for, where we fly, our needs are met, are met, and we live our purpose according to the one who created us. And God, that's exactly the kind of community we want to be. The kind of community that receives power to overcome temptations, to be set free from cages, Lord, who shows the world what it means to be human according to you, what you intended us to live life, uh, like that we may display to the world and give them glimpses of life outside the cage. Help us do just that, Lord. Deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. For your honor and glory. In Jesus' name.
Amen.
Family, thank you so much for joining us in this online worship experience. We hope and we pray that it was such a blessing to you and your family. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again next week. Bye-bye.